Basically, uh, y- your life was programmed because the primary subconscious programs that, that shape our lives, we downloaded those programs in the first six years of our lives, even before our consciousness was fully evolved. So that the basic programs that we run our life by were introduced into our brain even before we were where we were being programmed, and we didn't even see it. So, And then when we play them, we don't see it either. So it's like, ah... That invisible thing that prevented me from getting where I wanted to go wasn't from the outside, it was from the inside. When, when you're raising a child, mm. is to recognize, remember I said the first seven years you download the programs from other people. You may ask now, why would you do that? Why don't you just have your own programs? And I'll give you a simple reason. I say, look, you go to the Apple store and you buy a, new, a brand new iPod. You take it out of the box and I say, push play. Nothing happens. And all those people around you are snickering and going, yeah, yeah, you know what? Because you didn't download any music. So how can you play any music if you didn't download any music? It's like, ah, you cannot be conscious unless you have some program to be conscious of. That is why nature made the first seven years programmable. Put the program in, consciousness kicks in at around age seven, can use the program. The Jesuits, 400 years, have said, Give me a child until it's six or seven, it will belong to the church for the rest of its life. I go, do you understand what they just said? They've been saying that for 400 years. Here's what they're saying. You give me the download program of seven years, and I will control the fate of that child, irregardless of what their intention is. This child will always belong to the church because I programmed it to be that way. Those people that regulate programming are far better at it than the Jesuits could have ever imagined. And we've all been programmed. I say, so then our life is not our life. Our life is an expression of a program that we have been given, a program of Darwinian competition, a program of being a uh, victim to our genes, uh, a program that life is based on competition, all these things. I say, these are programs. I say, these programs are in your life because now we know 95% of your life comes from the programs. Let me give you a fact. Every human is equally powerful in their potential. Every human is equally powerful. I said, well then, how did some humans, let's say like uh, Bill Gates, get all that power? And you say, oh, did they get more powerful? They didn't get more powerful. They took away your power. And when you got less powerful, they became more powerful. Being in the moment, in the flow, brings back the power to the conscious mind so our subconscious programs don't run us. Absolutely, but then the problem is our world is so busy that it's a very difficult process to keep your conscious mind present. Mindfulness. I say, yeah, except falling in love is an automatic mechanism that encourages mindfulness. And that's why when you fall in love, your life is dramatically different than it was the day before you fell in love. And I say, but what's the relevance about it? I say, well, because once you started to do your own creation without the program, you got healthy, you got happy, and life was heaven on earth. But once you you know, start thinking again, because look, I can be in love for a while, but I still have a job. I still got to pay the rent. I got to take care of my chores, which means as soon as life starts to intrude, I have to start thinking about all the things I do. And I say, the moment you start thinking is the moment you default to those subconscious behaviors. And I go, yeah, but those aren't your behaviors. Those are the programs you got from your parents. Go back in your life. I'm sure at some point in your life, you were very close to a friend. You knew your friend's behavior very, very, very well. And you happen to know your friend's parent. And one day you start to see that your friend and their parent have some of the same behavior. You know, it's real exciting. You make a connection. And so you really want to tell your friend and you go, hey, you know, Bill, you're just like your dad. And then I say, back away from Bill. Why? The moment you say to Bill, he's just like his dad, what's the most inevitable response is, how can you compare me to my dad? I'm not like my dad. I'm me. I'm not my dad. And there's a great, like, you know, denial. I am not like my dad. Well, then I said, well, here's an interesting point. Everyone else can see that Bill behaves like his dad. The only one who doesn't see it is Bill. I go, well, what does that mean? I go, well, where did he get the behavior? Download it. First seven years. Download his dad's behavior. It's built into the subconscious. I go, great. Why doesn't he see when he's playing? And I said, well, why is he playing his default subconscious program? The answer is because his conscious mind's busy thinking. Oh, if the conscious mind's busy thinking, then by definition, it's not paying attention. And therefore, when you're thinking and you default to the subconscious program, you're the one that doesn't see it. Everybody else does.